Today on Turn On To Food, Merle Ellis takes us to a California winery. But first, Anne-Marie flames at Cherry's Jubilee. Probably the showiest thing to do in cooking is to flambe. Well, we're going to show you everything you ever wanted to know about flambe, and it is wonderful, and you should do it in your dining room with all your guests as an audience. Make sure your lights are dimmed and the whole thing. But before you can start, you need to know what kind of equipment you need. Well, you need a rechaud. It means it's simply like a little portable stove. You could have it also an electric blade, but it doesn't look as nice. You do want to have one of those numbers. I mean, if you go, you might as well go all the way. Then one equipment you definitely ought to have is uh, one of those, a fire extinguisher, just in case. You don't want to burn down the whole house just in order to impress him, okay? But it really is, once you understand what it is you're doing, it is easy, really nothing to it, and it is wonderful. Now, to flambe is not only desserts, you can do it with main courses, first courses, all sorts of things. So we're going to show you some main courses and some desserts and then something wonderful to drink. By the time we get through here, just the fumes of the alcohol, I'll be flying sky high. Okay. Now, the first dish we're going to make is a steak Diane. It's probably one of the most popular one of all of the uh, flambe dishes or dishes that you make on the table side, whether it's in restaurant or at home. And the reason for it is that beef lends itself perfectly for this. Now, whether you make this with a filet mignon or with shell steaks, as we're doing here, doesn't make any difference. Make sure, though, that they aren't very thick. You don't, generally, if you have thicker ones today, that's not what you want. About a half an inch is perfect for that. And you just season them with salt and pepper just before. And then you have in your pan and top, you have some butter and we brown it in there, and we brown them earlier, and that's just to brown them on both sides. We just did it in order to speed up to give you more ideas. Then once you brown it, you have on the bottom this beautiful glaze, and this is part of your sauce for your steak, Diane. First thing you add into it is about a half a cup of fresh heavy cream. Then we add fresh chives, and you just simply chop those like so. Yeah, two tablespoons or so, whatever. You don't have to worry that much about measuring. And then we add some cognac to this, and that what gives us this wonderful flavor. And we also later on going to flambe it with it, but right now we have also part of it in the sauce. We'll put the, uh, it doesn't fit underneath the counter, so you put it on the side, okay? Stir this until it's hot. And then once your sauce has heated, we are going to return the steaks. And to return the steaks is mainly in order to uh, reheat them because you already cooked them pretty much by browning them, unless you want them well done and you don't want to do that, okay? So just do that stir. And as it comes to a boil, all this beautiful glaze on the bottom comes loose and gives you a wonderful flavor. And you simmer this for just about a minute or so. And I can smell all this alcohol going up. It's wonderful, okay? So this has seeded and we'll now add to it the cooked steaks, just in order to warm them again or cook them to the desired doneness, whichever one you want to put it. These kitchen tongues are wonderful for that. Also, some of these juices do put them in. They taste great with it. And then just before, as you, before you serve it, you're then going to flambe it. Now, whenever you flambe something, you must be aware that whatever you use, whether it's cognac or rum or whatever you have, must have at least 40 proof, as otherwise it will not flambe. It also should be preheated. It makes it much simpler. And the easiest way to do it is to you get yourself a soup ladle like this. And then you pour the liquid in and you put it. Now, in this particular case, you would simply hold it straight over your rucho. I heated mine just a little bit before in order to make it faster. And you just put that in there. Eh, you don't measure stuff like that, OK? And now, it's wonderful to have an assistant, or you could just take this and put it against here, or, as I do it at home, you lean it against you and just light your match. Try not to uh, blow up your match. And then you just put the match to it. Okay, and it gives you a wonderful flame. Now, you must remember, though, that you should have it uh, in the dark. Don't do that with television lights on because it just, uh, you can't see it otherwise. And then you just shuffle it around and it's instant stardom. It's as simple as that, okay? So do try that. It is wonderful as the main dish and it really does look terrific.
I've heard a lot about you. I can't wait till we meet. I hope you like me. The Morning Movie with Nico. Now, perfect polished nails in seconds. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Press-On Color, no messy polish. Press-On Color, no drying time. Press-On Color, no chipping ever. Lee Press-On Nails in fashion colors. Everything you need for longer polished nails. Lee Super Stick Tabs and 20 Lee Press-On Nails in a variety of sizes. Available in a rainbow array of today's popular colors. So press-on. Lee Press-On Nails now in fashion colors. I firmly believe that solutions to many of our problems today lie within ourselves. This belief can help you enrich your life, and it can be set forth in just six words. Expect a miracle. Make miracles happen. Yes, miracles still happen, as you'll see in Dr. Peel's remarkable magazine called Guideposts. Guideposts brings you true stories of today's miracles, how faith can help solve problems, how to cope with fear, illness, loss of a loved one, Inspiring stories you can experience in Guideposts, America's nonprofit interfaith magazine. But it's not sold on newsstands. This special offer could be your one chance to join the 15 million readers around the world. Phone now to get 12 issues of Guideposts for just $6.95, plus Dr. Peel's How to Cope with 10 of Life's Toughest Problems, free with your paid subscription. Phone 1-800-338-4300. That's 1-800-338-4300. Now we're going to show you some desserts, and the one that I'm going to show you is one of my all-time is one of my all-time favorite. I made this up a couple of years ago, and we simply called it Grapes Antoinette. Now, most names are just given by the chef, whoever makes it, and I figure she knew how to live it up, so this is a perfect dish to name after her, all right? And for it, the first thing you do is you simply make dessert grapes and keep them covered like that till just before you use them so that they don't dry out so much. And this is what you have there, nice, slightly browned, thin. If you cannot see my hands in back, you have pancakes, not grapes. So do that. And then we're going to fill them. And for the made a filling, you have in here some ice cream that uh, you softened. And in order so it doesn't melt, we put in ice water. And so you chip off the ice first. You just take it straight out of the freezer, all right? Uh, or I could leave it. Oh, please, come off ice cubes. It never, the last one, never mind, we're just going to leave it in there, okay? So just pretend this is standing on my counter. And it's soft and good quality vanilla ice cream. You can use a uh, store-bought one or make your own if you so desire. And with all these machines today, that's easy. Then I add some creme manier. You could use control, triple sec, any orange flavor liqueur. Pour some of that in there. And then you also add some zest of orange. Now, in order to get the cest, the easiest way to do that is you get an orange cester. I have had it with scratching, you know, getting my knuckles on the uh, grater. All you do is you just go like that, and it comes right off, okay? So get the cest of one orange, and then we stir this up and combine it well. Now, the ice cream must be softened for this, as otherwise it won't mix up. And then you put this back in the freezer, and freeze it until it is hard, okay? Because if you would now put it into your crepes, obviously it would not work, okay? And this is too liquid for me to even show it to you. But all you then do is you simply take one crepe, you take a spoon of it, put it on there, and then just roll it up like a cigar, like so. And you just pretend the mixture is in here like this. Now, a wonderful thing about this dish is that you can do this ahead of time. And you can keep it in the freezer for several days or a day before, a week for all I care. So we made some before, and I'm going to get those out from the freezer and show you what we'll do with it. Here we go. You first make your sauce. But I, for me, it'll, it wouldn't dare melt, all right? Now, to make a sauce for this particular one, this is very similar to grape sets, except it's taking it a step further. Now, the reason why I use this particular pot, which is not generally what you would do, as such as every one of you has got one of those fondue pots at home that you use once every three years, and the rest of the time it sits in the cupboard. We're going to show you what else to do with it besides fondue. We're going to make the sauce in here for your dish. And the first thing you need 
is one stick of butter or eight tablespoons, however your butter comes. And of course, this is unsalted butter. And this should be hotter. Well, unless you light it, it isn't gonna get hot, okay? So I had it lit, but it obviously wasn't lit enough for whatever. As it lit, put your hands on and burn yourself and you know it's lit and it is lit, okay? But by the time I get to this, this isn't quite melted. So you have the butter in here and then we add a quarter of a cup of sugar and you just use regular sugar for this. You can also, by the way, make the sauce ahead of time and just heat it the last minute, okay? You don't have to do it the hard way. And what you want to do though with the sugar is you almost want to caramelize it. You cook it with the butter until it just melts and starts to get a little brown. It gives it a wonderful flavor to it. And then again, we add the zest of an orange. And the zest is simply the yellow part. You do not use any of the white part. And put that in. And then about a half a cup of fresh orange juice. And I mean freshly squeezed, okay? There is a big difference. And always remember in cooking, at all times, you only get out what you put in. So do use really good ingredients half a cup of this. And then again, we add some more Grand Marnier or triple sec or whatever you used in the uh, mixture. <sighs> we won't measure it. About a quarter of a cup, half a cup, all right? As it cooks, the alcohol gets removed, so you don't really have to worry that much about it. And then you let the simmer for about two or three minutes, just in order so it combines. And this has not melted. So I'm going to put it on my stove because I want to pour it over this sauce, over the uh, dishes here. And it obviously, you do need to have a little bit more time. So we just put on the burner here. And it'll take about a second for it to melt. Once you've figured out how you turn on your stove, move some of the other things. They're just Grand Marnier and other dishes and other of the liqueurs that I heated so that it will make it a little bit faster. And then once you melt it, let me get the dish over. You just pour the hot sauce over it. Now, one of the great things here is that you have the ice cream stays nice and cold and you have the hot sauce over it and it tastes wonderful. You should definitely try that. And again, we flambe it. Let me bring that just over here. It'll make it much simpler. And uh, try not to have your chives here from the other dish because it doesn't go with the dessert. So while this is heats, you can clean up. That's how you learn as it goes along in the kitchen. In fact, you can also do it individually for each person. And I think we'll do that. Maybe you can see the flames just a little better. We take one. I would suggest you start off with one of these uh, grapes rather than to have two because that's a little too much for dessert. On the other hand, I know people who will eat even two or three. So take that or play it by ear or whatever you call that. And so we'll just pour a little of the sauce over. Now hurry up and melt. It always works out that way. When you want it to do it, don't do it. Okay, this is fine. We pour a little of the sauce over. And then, again, you take some creme manier. And we heated it. Put a match to it. And this one is real easy because all I'm going to do is just start it on there. Provided the, the gas is still on, isn't it? It's one of those days, but that's the great thing about flambeing is that here we go. Now you'd think it'd go faster. It didn't. Light it, and then just pour it over, and you serve it each one. You do not start eating until the flames die down. I'm Stay tuned for more. Turn on to food. Discover the joy life has to offer when you live it Apple's way. Premiering Monday, August 4th, here on Lifetime. You are about to become reacquainted with a magazine you grew up with. A magazine that's known for its extraordinary photography. A magazine about people, about history and the future, about laughter and pain, and growing up and growing old. A magazine, in short, about life. Now this, this is a magazine. I know it's silly, but sometimes the stories make me cry. Life is like no other magazine. Bigger, richer, witty, and surprising. Brimming with life month after colorful month. Life's photos, they get to me. I save them. 
Life's a keeper. All it takes is four easy payments of $7.97 each to have life delivered to your home for the next 12 months. And with your subscription, you get our fabulous 50th anniversary issue. 350 pages filled with the best of life's first 50 years, including the famous photos that made life a household word. It's an issue you'll treasure for years to come. Plus, if you order now, we'll send you this terrific combination clock telephone, free with your fully paid subscription. It's a handsome digital alarm clock with a snooze bar to let you catch a few winks. And it has a full-featured automatic redial for when you get a busy signal. So call 1-800-525-4000 toll-free and say, I'd like to subscribe to Life. You'll get 13 great issues of Life, including our special 50th anniversary issue and this space-saving combination clock telephone for just four easy payments of $7.97 each. Call 1-800-525-4000 for life, for yourself, or for a gift. Subscribe to Life for the pictures only life can capture, for the stories only life can tell. Call 1-800-525-4000. We're waiting for your call. Let's do one more because it is so much fun. Cherry's Chubilee is probably the most well-known and the most popular of all of these flambe dishes. So I'm going to show you how to do it because it's real easy to do again. And for it, you have another one of these dishes. This one has a silver bowl on it. And the first thing you do here is you're basically making a sauce. And we have on here some, th this is simply the cherry juice from the uh, can we pour that in. You then add simply some cornstarch with about a tablespoon, which you mix up with some of the cherry juice, add that to it, and then add some spiced rum. Sometimes they use cognac, but they have now a spice rum. Taste wonderful, has vanilla in it and great flavor. Pour that in, and then you add your canned cherries, obviously without the pits, you don't want to have them. And then you just simply heat it, pour it over vanilla ice cream, nothing to it, and again, flambe it as you do it. But now I'm going to show you how the Germans celebrate New Year's Eve, and that is another sight to see. So come along with me to the dining room, and I'm going to show you just how to do this. How about a Feuerzeugen bowl next year, New Year's Eve? It's wonderful. They do that in Germany. And what it is, we have in here red wine, we have sugar in it, and we put an orange peel where we simply put some cloves in it, and you simply just put that in. And you let that sit all evening and you let it simmer. But the most important part and the fun part is this here. This is what is called a sugar cane. Now in the old days, this is the way they used to sell sugar. What you do is that this particular pot comes with a small thing like this, where you put a sugar cane on here. And then we soak the sugar cane with rum. And then we light this. And all night long, this is lit and the rum with the sugar keep stripping into your punch and come about 12 o'clock, let me tell you, you are tripping too. <laughs> it just keeps getting stronger. It is wonderful. You're going to light this, and but you just pour a little over and then you just keep on going and you see how this glows beautifully. And as it sits there, it just keeps on going. And then as you go along, you take some of it out and you can also add more punch to it if it's necessary. And it's a wonderful way to celebrate New Year's Eve, or for that matter, any time of the year. To the good life. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Merle Ellis. You know how you feel about going to bed? That's how you can feel about getting up in the morning. The Morning Movie with Nico. I like your style, Spiegel. The way you help me find the looks I love in fashion, in furnishings, in everything that touches my life and my lifestyle. It's all here. Over 500 pages in the Spiegel catalog. Not just the smartest and most convenient way to shop. It's the only way to shop. You can order by phone 24 hours a day. Even the catalog is easy to get. Just dial Spiegel at this toll-free number and they'll send it right out to you along with a gift. This $20 value Pierre Cardin tote bag big enough for exercise gear, makeup, and more. It goes where you go beautifully. They'll also include a $3 certificate, good towards your first purchase. You pay only $5, and you can charge it to your Visa, MasterCard, or American Express card. It all starts with a phone call, so do it now. 
and experience this whole new world of fashion and service. Call this toll-free number for your big Spiegel catalog. You'll like their style. Monday on Against the Wind. I looked in their eyes and saw the cruelty. Unjustly imprisoned by British authorities. Rude are you a born girl? A young Irish woman is exiled to an Australian penal colony. She will suffer the neck yoke for two hours. I'm coming back. So begins the sweeping saga of Mary Mulvane. See the premiere episode of this five-part epic presentation, Against the Wind. Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern, here on Lifetime. Wine has long been an important part of cooking around this country. To the adventurous few who first saw this land, the grape was one of the most impressive sights. When the Vikings first stepped on the shores of America, near Martha's Vineyard in the year 1000, they were amazed at the abundance of wild grapes. Leif the Lucky even named the land Vinland. Hundreds of years later, Sir Walter Raleigh, who sighted the Carolina coast in 1584, reported a land full of grapes. One of the explorers under his command described the land as the goodliest under the cloak of heaven and the grapes as larger and more luscious than those of Europe. The first English settlers regarded wine as a basic part of their meager diet. Nearly all of the original colonies cultivated the grape and made wine. But it is California that has become the wine producing region of America. And this valley, the Sonoma Valley, has become one of the greatest. The vineyards of the Sonoma Mission are now owned by the Sebastiani family. They have been making wines here in the Sonoma Valley since before the turn of the century, and their vineyards include those planted by the Mission Padres in 1825, making Sebastiani vineyards the oldest in the Sonoma Valley. It is also one of the few wineries that has remained over the years a family operation. Visiting with the Sebastianis, we discovered that there is much more to the subject of wine than vintages and varietals, a nice nose or a touch too much tannin. One can quickly get bogged down in names and dates and technical terms. The enjoyment of wine is basic here and a whole lot easier to understand. Sylvia Sebastiani is, is the grand lady of Sebastiani Vineyards and I thought it'd be nice to talk to her about something that, uh, that she certainly should know about. Wine has been a large part of your life for, well, all of your life, I would imagine, but, but I'd, I'd like to know about, a bit about, about wine in the American family. How do you, how do you view uh, the role of wine in, in, uh, with a meal or, or in family life? Well, <clears throat> it's always been a part of my meal, all my life. So I, it's just, just goes with eating. <laughs> There's just no uh, such thing as a, a meal uh, without uh, wine, right? That's right, uh, except for breakfast. And uh, we've, always, we've always had wine on the table since I can remember, since I was just a little child. Um, we raised our children the same way they could always have uh, wine when, whenever they wanted to at meals. See, the Italian, the old Italian families, now I don't know how this is true, probably the French and, and other nationalities too, but uh, they drank wine with their meals. And um, they didn't drink it that much between meals. Uh, so uh, the, the children uh, didn't think it was such a, a, a big deal when they, as they got older to, to go out and drink because it, they were exposed to it so much that it was just, you know, common thing with them. Sam Sebastiani runs the winery, or so it seems, from his red and white pickup truck. He hardly stops moving, particularly during harvest season, from winery to vineyards and back again. And he loves it. The enthusiasm with which Sam Sebastiani talks about wine is infectious. He took time out of his busy schedule to share with us some of that enthusiasm. You've got a colorful history here at Sebastiani. My grandfather bought his first winery from the mission uh, people. Right? right. He came over in the 1890s, and he uh, actually worked on that hill right over there. And he quarried cobblestones, which were used to make the streets of San Francisco. And uh, he made enough money from this chipping rocks, if you want, to uh, buy the old stone winery, which is still a winery now, uh, to start his venture in the wine business in California. So it's been a family, uh, a family operation. Uh, he he passed it on in what it was in the to 40s? my father in 1944, and my father passed away in 1980, and I've gone for since then. You don't raise all of you. You have your own vineyards. How right. We have some seven, 700 acres of grapes ourselves. Uh, actually, we have uh, some of those acres I've pulled out because we've decided that we want to put better matches to the soil and climate on that land, but we will have, when we get all through with our new plantings, about 700 acres. 
According to Sam, winemaking is really rather a simple process. He says that God makes the grapes, and the grapes themselves want to turn into wine. All that the grower does is to tend the vines and make sure that the grapes are harvested at the peak of their sweet perfection. It's the sugar content of the grapes that determines the alcoholic content of the wine, and that has much to do with its ultimate quality. All of that is carefully monitored in modern wine production here at Sebastiani's, but Sam says that there's much more to a fine wine than even modern technology can detect. There's no, there's no way in chemistry to completely analyze a wine. It, it's uh, something that people, their tongues really do the analysis. So for us to decide that we're ready to let this wine out, or is it ready, or will it ever be ready, uh, it takes people in their palates. And so we have a group of people that specialize in tasting wine. And uh, by doing this over time, you can, say, you can spot flavors and you can say, is that going to improve? Is it going to go away? Is it going to get worse? And you say, hey, there's something I don't like, or hey, there's something that's going to get really good later. And you have to make the decision before you can let a wine uh, through the winery. Wine, it is said, is at its best when served with food and expresses itself most fully when shared with friends. Vicky Sebastiani proved that both of those statements are true. The lunch that Vicky prepared also consisted of a green tomato pie, muffins made from cattails. Now, those were an interesting and delicious experience, as were the stuffed zucchini blossoms. A beautiful caviar pie was served with a sparkling wine as an appetizer, and a cake layered with wine-flavored fillings was dessert. Served on the Sebastiani's patio overlooking the Sonoma Valley, it was a lunch to remember, something very special. Even the way the wines were served was different. A little out of the ordinary, yet sensible and down to earth. It, it, you notice today at lunch we had three glasses of wine on the table. And I don't believe in bringing one wine out with this course. Because my flavor preference versus yours might be different. So I put the wines that I want to feature tonight, or today, on the table. And then you taste along and say, ah, this might go with this little part of the, the plate that I'm eating. If it feels good to you, you've made it. Right. You don't have to have any PhD in winemaking or any... Uh, graduate degree to uh, make that decision. Your tongue will do it for you. For today's recipe, send a large self-addressed stamped envelope to Lifetime, Box 4019, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 117. What do you look for in a man? Style, sense of humor, sensitivity, intelligence, creativity, good looks, modesty. The Morning Movie with Nico, beginning Monday, August 4th, here on Lifetime. When it comes to paying your taxes, you don't always have much of a choice. But with Fidelity Investments, you do. Look. Fidelity has a number of funds that all earn high yields, free from federal income taxes, like the Fidelity High Yield Municipals. It's for investors like me looking for the higher yields available from long-term bonds. Or if you're more safety-minded, is the Fidelity Insured Tax-Free Portfolio. It invests in municipal bonds insured to guarantee the timely payment of interest and principal. As with any bond fund, yield and share price will vary. Or choose the tax-exempt money market trust for all the convenience and stability of a money market investment tax-free. So make the right choice now. Choose high yields that are all 100% federally tax-free and keep more of what you earn. Call Fidelity at 1-800-338-4300. That's 1-800-338-4300. Fidelity, for a choice in tax-free investing. George Apple is searching for a better life. Now be honest, people. Isn't it nice to get away from the smog? A simpler way of life. There are plenty of rewards for hard work, not always money. A better life for his kids. Boy, I've got a lot to learn. And a better home for his family. I love you, George Apple. Discover the joy life has to offer when you live it Apple's way. Premiering Monday, August 4th, here on Lifetime. Either you can have me or the throne. Not both. Sir, you cannot marry her and stay as king. My son intends to desert his country for a woman. What you are proposing would break up the empire. If the British Empire is worth preserving, it will survive without me. A king's abdication and exile for the woman he loved. The concluding chapter of Edward and Mrs. Simpson. Today at 4 and 11 p.m. Eastern, here on Lifetime. 
High above New York City and down this hallway sits one of the most powerful businessmen in the world. He's chairman of the board of the Rapid American Corporation, a company that does $4 billion worth of business every year. He owns Shenley Whiskies, Botany 500, Learner Shops, McCrory Drugstores, and the Riviera Hotel. His name, Mashalem Rickless. And today, we're going to meet him. Mr. Rickless. Mr. Rickless? 